like to start off stoichiometry by showing you features of a balanced chemical equation. Here we have the balanced chemical equation, CH4H8 reacting with O2, which are these two molecules are the reactants to produce CO2 and H2O. These molecules on the right are the products. We see here that this is a completely forward reaction, meaning that there's one arrow pointing in the forward direction. There's no reversibility in this reaction. Okay. Now, the way to read this equation, first you could describe it as one molecule of C4H8 react with six molecules of O2 to produce four molecules of CO2 and four molecules of H2O. Another way of examining this is to read it as one mole of C4H8 reacts with six moles of O2 to produce four moles of CO2 and four moles of H2O. In both of those descriptions, I did not mention the word mass or grams. So no mass is directly communicated in this equation. What is communicated in this equation is the number of molecules. My first description, I described it at the molecular level. Four, one molecule, C4H8, reacts with six molecules of O2 to produce four molecules of CO2 and four molecules of H2O. That was at the molecular level. The second description I gave was the mole level. The number of moles. That was one mole of C4H8 reacts with six moles of O2 to produce four moles of CO2 and four moles of H2O. Now remember, a mole one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. That's what one mole is. So I'll read it again. When I say one mole of C4H8, I really mean 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of C4H8 react with 6 moles of O2, which is really 36.12 times 10 to the 23rd O2 molecules. Where did 36.12 come from? Well, six times this number here. That produces four moles of CO2, which is 24.08 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of CO2 and 24.08 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of H2O. So there are two ways of looking at the chemical equation, and they're really counting the number of molecules. You could count the number of molecules as individual molecules at the molecular level, or you could sort of up the ante, so to speak, okay, and multiply everything by, multiply the coefficients by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. But it's still a count, and nowhere that I, in my description, that I mentioned mass. There's no mass information given directly in that chemical equation. But one needs to consider mass and even volume of solutions. Well, because when you go to the lab, you want to carry these reactions out, typically you're going to weigh substances out, you're going to measure volumes of solutions, 
And that's where you're going to start. You don't start by counting the number of molecules. Okay. So there's got to be some kind of a translation. There's got to be some kind of a translation from mass to the count we're talking about here. And the count we're talking about is really the mole count. If you remember from a few videos ago and earlier in the chapters, what is the translation or the conversion unit we use to go from mass to moles and vice versa, moles to mass? And that is molar mass. So molar mass is going to be our friend when we start doing stoichiometry problems, when we need to talk about grams of substances. Later on, when we start talking about volumes of solutions and concentrations, we're going to use molarity not molar mass, something called molarity, a unit of concentration, and the volume to help us get into the mole. But we need to appreciate here that chemical equation is surrounded by a mole field. Look at this red outline I put around here as the mole field. 